Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And let's get started. This is not an ordinary puzzle, it's a golden puzzle. And you'll see why in a little bit. So a square is inscribed in a regular unit pentagon as shown. Find the side length of the square. So we do have a unit pentagon. All sides are equal length and they're one. And also each angle uh, is uh, congruent or all angles are congruent. Okay, so what am I gonna do? I'll be making some connections, right? Uh, obviously. So let's go ahead and drop this uh, perpendicular line here all the way down like this. And then I'm going to make another connection. I'm gonna make a horizontal line here. That's pretty much what we need. We only need two connections here. We don't need more than that, okay? And then we're gonna be setting up our lengths. So we're trying to find the side length of the square. So let's call that X. If the side length of the square is X, what does that tell us? Well, from symmetry, this is going to be a midpoint. This is going to be a midpoint. So this length is going to be half of X. And this is going to be half of X, right? Uh, let's call this length Y. We don't know what it is yet, but let's just call it Y. Now we need some angles. And obviously for the solution of this problem, I'm gonna be using some trigonometry. And I know trigonometry is not everyone's favorite subject, but there are some interesting things that we're gonna be doing here. And of course, we're using a little bit of geometry and algebra as well. Okay, cool. Now, what are the angles? Well, if you have a pentagon five sides, so what's the formula? This is the, oopsies, what am I talking about? Okay, I'm ahead of myself. So basically, you are supposed to multiply n minus two by 180. This is gonna give you the sum of the interior angles. If you divide it by number of angles, you're gonna get each interior angle in a regular polygon, right? So for n equals five, this is gonna equal three times 180 divided by five, and that would equal 108 degrees. So in a regular pentagon, each angle is gonna be 108 degrees, okay? That's an important number. So this is gonna be split up into two equal pieces. Therefore, each of them is gonna be 54 degrees here. Cool. Obviously that's a right triangle. So this is going to be a 36 degree angle and this is going to be a 36 degree angle because this is also a right triangle and we have some similarities, so on and so forth. Okay, now I think we have everything we need and we're just gonna be setting up some equations. But before that, we do need to calculate more lengths, obviously, for example, do we know this one? We don't. And do we know this one? Nope. But we do know that their sum is equal to x, right? That's cool. Now let's call this h and let's call this k. So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate h and k and then put it together, put it together, and that's gonna make x. And how is that useful? You'll see in a little bit when I set it up, but let's go ahead and calculate h first. What is h equal to? Well, to find h, I'm gonna be using this little triangle here. And since I have the angle 36 degrees and I set the base to Y, I can use trigonometry, right? In other words, I can use tangent 36, can't I? Okay, yet, so tangent 36 is gonna give us, what, H over Y. My goal is to find Y, actually no, my goal is to find both, but let's go ahead and write down H in terms of Y. H is equal to Y times tangent 36, beautiful. Okay, so that's H. At least I know what H is in terms of Y. Cool. How about K? Well, if this is 36 degrees, this needs to be 72 degrees because they add up to 108, remember? We calculated that. So K can be written using tangent again, but this time we're gonna be using tangent 72. So tangent 72 is gonna equal what? Tangent 72 is gonna equal K, right? Over Y. Because this time you're looking at the opposite side, which is K, but the base doesn't change or the adjacent side. Okay, cool. So from here, K is equal to Y times tangent 72. So it's important to be able to express two different things in terms of the same variable, because then we're gonna put it together. So, okay. Well, we do also know that H plus K is equal to X because that makes up the uh, side length for the square. So M plus, where does M come from? Okay, I don't know. Anyways. So we know that h plus k is equal to x. So let's go ahead and write that down. h is equal to y times tangent 36, and k is equal to y times tangent 72, and their sum is equal to x. Beautiful. Now, how is that helpful? Well, from here, hopefully, you can do some factoring, and this allows you, what? 
to express uh, y in terms of x or x in terms of y, whichever y you want to use. Okay, let's see what we're going to use next. Well, well, now, if you look at this picture, what do you notice? I don't know. There's a lot of things to notice, right? But here's one thing that I'd like you to notice. Side length for the pentagon is 1. Therefore, we have a right triangle, which I'm going to show you. Let me go ahead and shade that for you. Ooh, that's not a... It's too light, probably. Okay. I think it's good enough, right? So in that right triangle, I know that the hypotenuse is 1, right? So how is that helpful? Well, using the hypotenuse, I can actually find this length here. What is that length, though? Well, it's kind of halfway between these two points, right? Okay. Moreover, uh, we can safely say that it's, it's equal to x over 2 plus y, right? You see that length here? x over 2 plus y. Okay, cool. So x over 2 plus y is equal to what? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. So in this shaded triangle, the green one, I can use cosine, right? Yep, that's right. How can I use cosine? Well, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and the adjacent side is x over 2 plus y. Divide that by 1, which is the same thing, is equal to cosine 36. So this is basically equal to cosine 36, right? Because this divided by this divided by 1 is the same thing. So cosine 36 is equal to this. But how is that helpful? Well, from the first equation, I can isolate y and then plug it into the second one. Beautiful. So we have a system here. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to isolate y. y can be written as x over tangent 36 plus tangent 72. Now, you might be wondering, what is tangent 36 and what is tangent 72? We're going to calculate those without a calculator. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and substitute this into my second equation. And let's see what, what happens after that. x over 2 plus x over tangent 36 plus tangent 72 is equal to cosine 36 from here, right? I hope you can follow. Awesome. We ended up with a single variable. Yay. And we're looking for x. Beautiful. Okay. How do you solve for x here? Well, you just got to solve for it, right? It's a linear equation. Come on, guys. It's not even quadratic. Okay. So don't take it too seriously. This is easy. We can do it. But first, let's go ahead and make a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out x, factor out, and then make a common denominator. So I should be getting something like this for the numerator, tangent 36 plus tangent 72 multiplied by x. But I took the x out, so it's 1, so on and so forth, plus 2, beautiful, divided by the common denominator, which is 2 times tangent 36 plus tangent 72. Beautiful. And this is equal to cosine 36. Okay, cool. Now, I need to isolate x so that I can get the answer. Multiply by 2 first, and then the cosine 36. And then the expression inside the parentheses, which is at the bottom, which is going to be the numerator now, because we're cross-multiplying, so on and so forth, whatever, all over the numerator because it's flipped. All right? So tangent 36 plus tangent... 72 plus 2. Sweet. Now, that's the answer. So I could probably at this point stop and say, hey, you know what? Whatever. Take it and that's the answer. But I want to give you a radical, a very radical answer. And that's going to contain some really nice stuff because we're talking about golden ratio here. Come on. Okay. That's serious stuff. So how do we do that? Well, here's what I would recommend. I mean, you don't have to do it that way, but I kind of like this triangle, which we can draw here. So let's go ahead and change some colors here. Let's say we have this isosceles triangle, whose base angles are 72 and 72. So what I'd like to do to that triangle is, I'm going to cut this with an angular bisector, so that this can be 36 and 36. Therefore, of course, when the base angles are 72 and 72, this guy here is going to be 36. Oopsies, we got another isosceles, but this is also going to be 72. Oh man, this is crazy. We have a lot of isosceles triangles here, which is kind of nice because we can use similarity, and similarity is beautiful. So let's go ahead and call this side length 1, and let's call this, I don't know, x maybe. Okay, cool. Then this is going to be 1 minus x, beautiful. And this is also going to be x because that triangle is isosceles, and this is also isosceles, therefore the base is also going to be x. Beautiful. Now, how am I going to find uh, the values of 36 and 72 from here? Well, we're going to be using some geometry or trigonometry, whatever you want to call it, right? Okay. 
So first thing I'm going to do is use similarity, obviously. Large triangle. Uh, the large triangle has the base is x, so I'm going to start with that. So go to the small base, which is 1 minus x, and then go to large triangle, as you use one of the lateral sides, let's say 1, and go to the small one, it's going to be x, right? Okay, cool. So that's my equation, and what is it going to give you? x squared is equal to 1 minus x, x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. But Okay, fine, I can find the value of x, but what does x mean? Okay, let's talk about that now. Now we're talking trigonometry. Okay, cool. So, what am I going to do? Well, I can use the law of sines, right? Can't I? Yes, we can. Okay, let's see. How can I use the law of sines? Well, I have x across from 36, and I have 1 from across from 72. Beautiful. Then I can just write that x over sine 36 is equal to 1 over sine 72, right? Beautiful. And then cross multiply x times sine 72 is equal to sine 36. Now I can expand sine 72. We're going to use the double angle here. 2 sine 36 cosine 36. You see? We're putting it all together in sine 36. Sine 36 is non-zero, so I can just go ahead and cross it out. And from here, I can find the x value. And of course, cosine 36 is just going to be 1 over 2x. Now, to keep a long story short, I'm going to give you the values. Obviously, you can solve this quadratic. You're going to get some. Okay, let's just solve it. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is going to be 5, divided by 2. Okay, so that's going to give you an x value. If you double that and then put it in the denominator, make a common denominator, or rationalize the denominator, so on and so forth, you're going to find all the values that you need. But let me go ahead and give you the values that you need so, so that we can proceed. Okay, so Tangent 36 is what we need. That's going to be the square root of 5 minus 2 root 5. Yep, that's a weird value, right? Tangent 72, and by the way, these are kind of like good friends. 5 plus 2 root 5, square root of that. And then cosine 36 is equal to root 5 plus 1 over 4. And you can talk about cosine 72, root 5 minus 1 over 4, the golden ratio, so on and so forth. Okay, beautiful. Now, we're going to put it all together. Obviously, our expression, remember, x was equal to 2 times cosine 36 times this, blah, blah, blah. We're going to place it all together, and that's going to be our answer. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Now, x is going to be 2 times cosine 36. So it's going to be 2 times this expression, right? And then that'll be multiplied by tangent 36 plus tangent 72. So that's going to look like square root of 5 minus 2 root 5 plus the square root of 5 plus 2 root 5, okay? And then all over, what are we supposed to divide that by? Tangent 36, square root of 5 minus 2 root 5, plus tangent 72, which is the square root of 5 plus 2 root 5, and then plus 1. And that should give you the answer. And this brings us to the end of this video. Of course, you can definitely cross out the 2 and the 4, and I put the 2 at the bottom, and then that'll be it for this video. All right? So that's basically it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time with another awesome video. Thank you, and take care. Bye-bye.